I was looking for farm work. I found him online on Gumtree. It was four hours driving from Brisbane in the middle of nowhere. When I arrived, I found a really dirty house with a really dirty farmer. <laughs> Each year, thousands of young backpackers like Ludmilla try their hand at farm work. The deal is they do 88 days of labour and in exchange, they get to stay a second year in Australia. But the dream can quickly sour. So I went to the shower. I had a shower at night time and he went into the bathroom when I was into the shower. so. I was really uncomfortable. He knocked at the door and I, I said, I'm having a shower right now, so don't come. And he came. He didn't look at me, so I was okay, but no, don't do that. I was scared about him, so at this time, I decided to post on Facebook to ask if someone knows this farm or knows something about him. I heard a lot of bad things about this farm. So I heard about someone, a girl, who were here four days before me and who was victim of sexual assault. So he tried to remove her bra, he tried to, to put his hand on her pants. He tried a lot of bad things and she was really scared. That night, Ludmilla hardly slept. It was her and another young female backpacker alone in the house with the farmer. I slept with a knife under my pillow because I was too scared. I was, like, really scared. And at first light, she decided to flee. I called the police, but I said to him that I called a taxi. The police dropped her at the service station half an hour down the road, but couldn't do much more. Without an actual assault, they were powerless. Hi, my name is Emily and today... Emily Lowe's in the middle of her 88 days of work on blueberry farms at Walgulga on the New South Wales north coast. This contractor also hires lots of people who just hold travel visa. Most of them come from China and Malaysia. She's been filming her work and keeping track of her pay. The wages is low, so I think it's like kind of slavery. Around... 50 to 60 dollars per day. But when I arrived in Google in July, um, we just earned 20 to 30 dollars per day. At the beginning, I uh, used my saving to pay the rent and for my uh, daily life. She says conditions are so bad, some farms don't even have toilets. It's hot and in the farm I worked before, they do not have the regular rest time or most of the time don't have the toilet, so we can't drink much more water. We have lots of examples of where backpackers and the growers have a really great relationship, but unfortunately there are some growers who spoil it for everyone. Growers know they have a problem. Rachel McKenzie is in charge of the industry group Growcom's response, called the Fair Farms Initiative. She says willing workers are desperately needed, but the current visa arrangement is far from ideal. So we have a whole bunch of people who don't necessarily want to work in agriculture, who feel forced to be working in agriculture. They take the jobs that are available and sometimes they don't do their due diligence about where they're going and what they're, what they're in for. And I do think that some of them actually have no idea about what it's actually like to work on a farm. And she says one of the realities is the pay. We do have peace rates in Australia and again because backpackers aren't necessarily here to work in agriculture, they're not experienced, when they first start working in agriculture they do legally get paid below the award rate. So they can perceive that as wage theft. Whether it is or not is a different question and one for the Fair Work Ombudsman. When the Senate investigated last year it found allegations of exploitation and slavery-like conditions for backpackers and it recommended a host of changes to better protect them, including an independent watchdog and an urgent review of the 88-day program.
Well, we have an independent authority and it's called the Fair Work Ombudsman and they are properly resourced given the powers, the investigative tools and also the right penalties to be able to prosecute those people who do the wrong thing. We've increased the resources and the powers of the Fair Work Ombudsman. More than $20 million has gone to the Fair Work Ombudsman specifically to look after vulnerable workers. Kelly O'Dwyer's just taken over as the Minister for Jobs. Well, I know backpackers like Bondi, they can certainly visit Bondi and they can spend their pay in Bondi, but if they want to be able to work, um, then certainly we, we say to them, see the rest of the country, help our farmers pick their fruit, help them with their crops and, you know, have a really good time in the process. And the reality is these are jobs Australians just don't want to do. And let's not be um, silly about this, it's not the most scintillating work for a lot of people, but it's good honest toil and it pays money and you get the job done. But for Ludmilla, it just wasn't worth it. She's given up on her 88 days and is leaving Australia next month. I was disgusted about Australia, about farm work, so um, I gave up. I gave up. I gave up my 88 days. I really want to stay second years because I love Australia. I really want to stay. I feel really good here, but the farm work is the only way. And 7.30 contacted the farms and the hostel mentioned, but they declined to comment. Ashlyn McGee reporting.